So hi everyone. Uh, today is the uh, webcast on uh, relationship between the master and the student. So I wanted to uh, start this uh, webcast uh, doing the Guru Yoga uh, uh, prayers all together. So I will put up on the screen that you will all see and uh, so we will sing all of us sing together uh, one time and I will do a short guided meditation um, that you can all follow with me together. We'll just sing the Guru Yoga one time. Just for a moment, we all sit comfortably. Five-point posture, those of you who are familiar with that five-point posture. If not, just sit comfortable. Keep your spine straight, chest slightly open, chin slightly down. Bring your attention in yourself, in your body. Allow yourself to settle down completely in your body in this moment, here and now. And let go of all the events, thoughts, feelings, emotions, plans. Just for a moment, let go completely. Imagine and feel the presence of white, a luminous being naked in the sky in front of you, who is like a Samantabhadra or Tabritsa. 
it's naked, luminous, because it embodies all the masters of the past, present, and the future. All the masters that you have learned, you're learning, that you might learn in the future. All the masters that you have practiced together and you have grown the help, help of, all the master that you are right now you are following all the masters that you might follow and connect in the future this luminous being represents all those masters So everybody from whom you have learned, the one who have helped you, the one has showing the path, guidance, just bring everybody in, in this image, just connect. Let go all, go of all the personal stories, doubts, conflicts, emotions, thoughts. Issue of distrust. Just for the moment, Focus on in a from your heart in a pure way that the only one who have guided you, who have taught you. Just connect. Connect with your open heart. Feel that a sense of unbounded space which is the inner master when you find that unbounded open space internally it allows you to without doubt and co with confidence to connect with your outer master feel that connection gratitude spontaneous gratitude and joy connection Just for a moment from that openness, feel the devotion through that devotion, connect with the master. And from that connection, allow yourself to evolve and grow and deepen.
So welcome everybody. Uh, once again, I'm very happy to do this ongoing webcast uh, teaching. And um, able to discuss um, some issues that uh, are relevant and helpful for our practice and our spiritual development. And at this time, um, I'm happy to talk a little bit about a master and teacher's relationship and particularly share a little bit of my own experiences. Um, so generally, um, the reason why it's important the master's and teacher's relationship because 
uh, that if you are like an Indian Buddhist uh, practitioner, if you're practicing, if you are really uh, have some deeper um, sense of openness or willingness to understand there is um, uh, karma, there is uh, reincarnation, so there is liberation, there is uh, enlightenment, enlightenment state, Buddhahood, so something that you, uh, you as any individual can uh, pursue uh, and achieve that ultimate liberation, then I think this relationship is very important. And because this reason why it's very important is because in a whatever deep level of de development and realization requires uh, a long, uh, I say, it's a long journey, it requires a, a consistent, a genuine support for this development. So it's not going to happen like, um, you know, if you look in everyday life, you, you have, uh, um, you know, a lot of psychological issues and, and in, in life, a lot of doubt, confusions, emotions, feeling down, and what you need is a very good therapist, for example. And so, so therapist can kind of uh, uh, help you. Why, so why do you need to have therapist? You need a help. And why, how therapists can actually help you is that you trust the therapy and that you have respect to the ther therapist and you respect to the process of that therapy and you have committed to f follow through the process. Uh, so if you don't have that, there's no way that uh, you can get uh, a real uh, support from that therapist. So, but, so this is like in a life, like in one time thing, maybe a one year thing, two year thing, you're working something like that, but this is not a short journey. This is a very long journey. If you believe as in Tibetan tradition, many sometimes, many lifetimes, there are teachers to students, they're kind of having stories about in the biography as having a lifetime relationship. So life after life, they're kind of following, following and so on. So anyway, the, this is not the important point trying to make everybody believe there's a reincarnation and karma and so on. But what I'm trying to say, if you understand that there is, it's, it is a long journey and it is something much higher achievement that we look for as enlightenment, free total freedom, absolute freedom, then this journey is long and you need a real support. So therefore, uh, the master is very important. Of course, sometimes people talk about uh, questions about, do I really need a master? And, and uh, well, generally speaking, uh, d uh, does anybody need a human master or not? It's possible 99.9% people need it. Maybe there's very, very few chances that it's possible that somebody does not need it. So uh, the question is most, most of us, like at least I can talk for myself. If I ask this question saying, do I need the master? I don't consider myself from that 99.9% .9 that percentage there, little percentage, I don't consider that. I consider myself as among the larger group who needs it. And, but it's possible that somebody might know it, but generally speaking, it is that finding is important, that relationship is very important because there's an Im incredible knowledge of body that you need to, to learn, that incredible depth of uh, practices that you need to, to learn. In order to follow through those practices, there's a lot of challenges, obstacles, outer, inner, sacred obstacles that you might face. You need some kind of mentor uh, support and guidance through those challenges. So if the path is very important, if the liberation is very important, then the master is very important. So that is why it's very important to have a master. Now, question about some people ask, how do I find a master? Well, that is a very good question. I remember very clearly one, one of our summer retreat, uh, uh, somebody asked my teacher, Yonzi Rinpoche, about the same question. And he said that how, do you, how you find your master is first, of course, you have to look 
look for your master. You, you, you the sense of, uh, sense of knowing that absolutely is necessary, and looking genuinely, looking with the dedication. And once you find somebody, not immediately jumping into that, saying, "Oh, I found my master," getting so excited. You know, I have, I have personally had many experiences like that. People like first time they come, come to me and saying, oh, you know, you are great. Your explanations are clear. I feel connection to you, this and that. And then I listen more, a little bit more. And then immediately they have a complaint about another master, which they have just followed. Uh, maybe last 10 years they have been following somebody. And now they're totally critical of that master. And then they are praising me like a crazy, like a, like I'm not even a human being or something like that. So when I hear that, I go, there's some kind of, you know, the blinking, red, red blinking in my head saying, okay, I am the next target of this person. So I, I don't get excited when people come to like me like that. I get more encouraged and more trust people who come to me saying, you know, oh, I've been following somebody for a long time. I have so uh, devotion, uh, I uh, respect, I have learned so much and, uh, and I, you know, maybe that master passed away, maybe that master has moved away, maybe I do no longer have come to kind of that closeness, but I'm in a different stages in my life, I need to learn more, I do feel some more also, I also feel some connection to you, can I learn completely, continuously from you? And as I keep my master continuously, keep that my principal master in my heart, then I say, wow, yes, this is, this is a good person. So same way my, my teacher told in, in saying, first, you don't jump right away into the decision. We analyze, you can analyze, you can see um, if that master ha has enough knowledge uh, to offer, if that master, uh, you feel from your heart, do you feel some connection to that master? Uh, do that master have enough knowledge that you can learn and grow f or grow from? And, and do, do you feel some sense of trust there? And so some analysis, I think, is important because uh, we do that all the time. And, and nothing wrong about doing that. And at the same time, also listen to your heart. Do you, what do you feel? Do you genuinely feel a sense of openness, a sense of uh, genuine devotion, connection? And if your heart says yeah, yes, if your mind says yes, then you say, okay, this is it. So this is my master. And uh, then you, when you want to decide like that, then you have to try to follow through. It's, master is not exactly the same, of course, master is a little similar relationship, like a re, it's like a relationship when you're trying to find your husband or wife in terms of long-lasting thing. You know, when you, uh, you, when you fall in love with somebody, you don't immediately, overnight, you don't make a decision to get married. If you do, very often, 99% they, 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 they get divorced. You take time, you, you feel, you analyze, and then you feel connection, then you make a decision. You, when you make a decision, you're not saying this perfect, this person is perfect. It should, it should be always the same person that, or the person who I have fallen in love with. I saw from the point of view of when you're in love with somebody, you see this perfection. You wanted to, you see this perfection in this person. You see everything is wonderful with this person. If you expect same, after 30 years in marriage, if you ex expect to feel the same thing, probably all of we know that's not going to happen. And you, but the person you saw who does not have any look, doesn't look like have any problems and errors. And then after okay, 10 years later, you see, oh, this person is a normal human being. Even there was this person was a, I, I, I fall in love, but there's, there's this problem. There's, there's always some certain issues because we personally, you have issues, you always project your issues on somebody. I am sure if the Buddha appears on the earth and Buddha moved into your neighborhood and you don't know it's the Buddha, very likely, very likely, I'm sure you're going to have some problem with that Buddha because whatever other reasons, Buddha has parked in a wrong car in a wrong place or Buddha has, I don't know, 
uh, played little loud music there or whatever Buddha might have done, you might have problems because you don't know it's the Buddha. You see, so you might face some challenges with that person. So once you make a clear decision, it's important that you work on it. I look at that way. When I have my teachers, I have uh, my teachers, His Holiness, Yongzhen Rinpoche, Lopin Sanji Tenzi, and Geshe Yunlu, and many other my teachers, and I, I know sometimes, not necessarily, you know, uh, it's easy. Sometimes there's a challenging situations. Whenever there's a challenging situations, in my mind, I don't tell them that you need to, to work on those situations because they are not my student, they are my teacher. I took a, take, take them as all those challenges. It's my work, my job to figure out, to clear those obstacles and so on because I choose these people as my teacher. So when there is a, my own need, expectations, desire, whatever comes up, and when they become a challenges in my relationship, I take a serious uh, uh, work to work on them myself rather than expecting them to change. I don't do that because, uh, because I am a student. I, I choose these people to learn from. Uh, they, I'm not saying they, are, uh, they, don't have a, they don't do mistake. I'm not saying they, have a, they are fully enlightened. For me, they are. Uh, so, f for even though I see sometimes something might something is not correct, still I try to work them in my own uh, place because they, these are interrelationship. So these are something that very important that a student need to, to work. And of course, there are certain situations when something does not work out. Unfortunate situation sometimes does not work out at all then it, of course, is better to not continue that relationship um, and that relationship and find, find the right person like we would do in, in a relationship. You do that, but, but it's good to, there are, there are marriages last forever, lifetime. There are the master teachers relationship lasts forever, especially when they, they, they have choose the right person, when they, they are working with the right way among with themselves, within themselves. Uh, things can last forever, and go, and from that deep relationship, there can be a lot, lot of growth. Uh, is possible. So, so, so the ch going back to the question of how to choose. So, these are the two uh, things that you intellectually and how your heart says, and when you feel somebody is, and then you say this is it, and then you really start trying to seriously work work on that relationship is important with a commitment and also trying to make sure that you are not trying to follow that master just because you wanted to be the head of the organization you wanted to be close to the master you wanted to be the friend to the master you you wanted to be the one the main person it's to make sure there's no way impossible not to have ego but make sure that ego is not making decision Ego, it's very minimum in that relationship. And your heart, your clarity of your mind, it's maximized in that relationship. You, you're, you're following that person just simply because you care that relationship, a spiritual relationship. You care to grow, you care to learn, you care to develop what you have learned to your own pursuit of your own ultimate liberation. So that should be the primary goal and every other goals are there, reasons are there, watch them, watch them, watch again. And uh, I'm sure there will be, uh, but every, I don't know, I don't think any student situation is just completely pure. There always there is, and there will be, but most important thing, watch them, don't let it overtake, and try to clear them as much as possible. So, so that is the, uh, um, way to uh, way to look for, find, and maintain some some degree, and then also, I as I said mentioned, uh, His Holiness Long uh, Tempe Nyema Rinpoche and Lopin Sanje Tenzin Rinpoche and Yongzi Yongzi Tenzin Namda Rinpoche are my principal teachers, and uh, particularly you know like I am lived and uh, grew up with the. Uh, Yonzi Rinpoche, Yonzi Tenzin Namda Rinpoche, those of many of you know, he um, 
uh, he lives in Nepal and uh, frequently he visits in France and and he is uh, very often in summer he's in France and uh, doing a retreat and I always encourage people all my students to go there and uh, uh, feel his presence and so uh, my relation to him is it's over 40 years of relationship and I know clearly this relationship is not only this lifetime, any lifetime, and I know uh, it will continue not only this life and, and continue in, the, in my, uh, if I have a, uh, lucky enough, fortunate enough to continue in even next generation, I said next life to continue this relationship. So, so that um, this relationship is, uh, of course, uh, ch change it, changed over the years when I was around age 10, as you can see, 10 years old boy uh, would not have so much uh, uh, understanding or, and way of relating to the master, not know so much. I was a little bit like his son, basically. Uh, so my, it was more like a father relationship. And I remember clearly sometime he helped to uh, uh, feed me and clean uh, or some my shirt or something like that and uh, always guiding me, helping me, and then gradually a um, relationship is more like a learning and learning uh, in everyday classes and then also feeling some sense of very closeness that I was, you know, feeling very completely comfortable to talk to him whatever I wanted to talk to him. That was, I think, is very important. Sometimes in the West I see it, it feels like a I make people nervous, you know, if somebody's driving me and they get nervous and they're almost having an accident or something like that. <laughs> I'm not saying anything, but they're projecting on me and whatever they are projecting on me, it's, uh, it's nothing to do with me. I am totally normal, uh, um, very casual, friendly, talking, sharing, and uh, about people project things and so and they get nervous or something like they don't able to talk. I think it's important that people should able to uh, share and talk clearly what their thoughts and feelings are, and that's what I felt with the Yohan and Boche. Um, and so, uh, over 40 years of relationship, and then once I finished my Geshe degree, and uh, I we went to travel to Tibet together. And after we came back, then of course it was like a, a ch child grow, grown up. Now you have to kind of move on your own life. So I came to the West. And since then the relationship has shifted and ch changed. And so now I don't have that fortune to be with him as, as all the time, every single day, a day, morning and evening and eating together, that, that no relationship. But every now and then many years I went to visit back to Nepal every year, to went, went to Mandri Monastery to his, visit His Holiness every year. And so I try to keep my annual, a couple of times annual visit every year to maintain that. When I go there also, I don't go there as um, nothing has changed in my relation to him. him is I'm a student, I go there to stu as a student uh, and uh, do whatever the student does. So, so this relationship has been uh, very enriching for me in my, in my life. So that is, uh, it's very absolutely it's possible for everybody to have this this kind of relationship. And uh, and I you know you know I I'm saying sharing these little stories, personal stories, it's because it's very much possible to to this can happen. So let me talk a few things. What are some kind of obstacles that does not allow these these kind of things happen sometime because my own experiences in the in the west sometime when people come as a student as i said earlier people sometime they're not looking for a, a teacher maybe it's very important to see why you're coming what are you really looking for are you looking for a friend just a friend then teacher is the wrong place to go because teacher will not be good that good friend because teacher will probably tell you what to do you know it's to, you know tell you what to do or might order you um, so it's not like a, so you have to learn to obey in a degree once you respect somebody as a teacher you have to learn to obey that's the rule of the teacher you you have always a right to not consider somebody as a teacher because you don't trust that person you because that person does not know enough 
or, uh, or whatever issues. But once you trust, once you feel considered as a teacher, you learn, need to learn to obey. And uh, so, but friend, you don't have to obey to your friend. Uh, I'm, I wanted to tell to all my translators, I'm sorry here, I, I just recognize myself speaking a little too fast. Probably all of translators are thinking that, okay, I, it's going too speedy. So uh, let me calm down for a moment. <laughs> and uh, I'll speak a little slower. All the translators can take a little breathing. Inhale and exhale. <laughs> so, so one, if one is looking for a friend, you don't go for a teacher, but the teacher can be like a friend, some degree like a friend, a teacher is not just a friend. If you are looking for a relationship, the teacher is not the good person to have a relationship with, clearly, because the teacher will also still order you in relationship, which you don't want to have a, 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 somebody ordering you in a relationship. If you wanted to do a business, a teacher is not a good, good person to do a business with, because you know, teacher is in a different position. In a business, it's good to have very equal position, very open. You know, teacher is not a good person to do a business with. If you are looking for uh, some sense of power, like in organizational power, a teacher is not a good place to go because many times when uh, people, I know it's my own experiences, when people came to me, sometimes I recognize they, they are kind of interested in my, me, me and my teaching, but I can see they are more interested in organizational power or some power uh, that uh, to find, which they did not find in themselves. So I am always trying to tell that, you know, the power is within. The inner refuge is most powerful source, and you connect with that. But if you're looking for is a group power, uh, organizational power, Dharma groups are the one of the worst place to find a power because they, everybody is working as a voluntary, everybody has too many opinions and not necessarily always have skills of what it require because it's based on availability and uh, free time. It's not a good best place to trying to look for power. Go for, if you're seeking for power, then run for um, run, run in the government, in the government section or something like that. So anyway, the bottom line, what I'm saying here, make sure why you are following that person. It's just because you wanted to follow you wanted to follow Dharma, you wanted to follow spiritual path to, to, for, for your well-being in this lifetime and well-being with others this lifetime, ultimately achieving liberation. That is the single most reason why you are following path, why you are following that person should be. And, and if that is only the primary reason, then I think it's a, it's, there's a much more uh, chance to a chance of success in this relationship uh, in in uh, in the long long run in in the future. So 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 it's very important to uh, find set in relationship. Of course, saying that uh, many people, you know, we as we always work in the community. We always work in in and trying to in a, in the sangha. Uh, we because we believe in a service, and so when you believe in a service, and you wanted to get in, in you know, I know there are a lot of people who have time. They wanted to do something meaningful thing in their life to trying to contribute their time, skill, and funds to 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 towards something that they really believe worth. Uh, investing. So I'm saying, of course, you get engaged in the Sangha and supporting things. But when you do that, make sure 
that you hold yourself in a very humble place, you hold yourself uh, minimum ego place, and you always separate your relation to the teacher and the teaching. It's it's very clean and very pure, and that is the m number one most important reason why you are with that person and with that teaching. And everything you, if, if there's any issue in any relationship, then you drop everything else but maintain that. Uh, reason why I'm saying that is many. I have many experiences where people get very power game in organization in a group and when when that that part of their organizational relationship does not work out then they then they blame teacher then they blame other members of organization then they blame the teaching and then they disconnect and then they not only they separate themselves from the teacher with, with that sangha, but they sometimes they also separated, unfortunately, with the teaching and the practice itself. It does not have to be like that. You can you can get rid of many things. You can get rid of all the organizational things and all the you know service things when you are having conflict working with somebody. You you just let it go. It's just it's not important. And then you connect, you maintain your relation with only with the teaching, only with the teacher, because that's what you begin in initially. You begin to follow, and you don't have to be part working in a group and working in administration in organization, because that's not working out. You just follow the person, you follow the teacher, and hopefully that will work for you. Because if you have started in the right way, relating in the right way, it will work for you. But sometimes that doesn't work for because they have mixed it up too much with the organization, their own inner conflict, the teaching and the teacher. So in those cases, then you let also teacher go. So forget about the organization, forget about those working position, even forget about the teacher. It's okay, you can let go the teacher, but not let go the teaching and the practice that you, the teacher taught you. It's, you can start with the same tradition with another teacher, uh, continue with the same practices that you, but somehow hold some sense of respect to that teacher, but you don't have to day to day and year to year follow that teacher. You can still continue some sense of relationship, but not that closeness. So there are many different ways I think it's possible to maintain these higher relationship for one's own personal and spiritual development. So that is important. So I think uh, um, I think um, I will leave a little space here, maybe a little break for the translator, and uh, um, then we will uh, just again all of you can sit comfortably, and we will uh, I will play the Guru Yoga one times, sit comfortably, and. Um, Take out long, uh, some deep breathing out. Sit comfortably, bring your attention inward. Sky in front of you, imagine Tapiritsa or Samanda Bhadra, white luminous being, embodying all the masters. Open your heart, feel spontaneous devotion. And just feel the connection. Connection with yourself, connection to the older masters, 
it's one. Yes, yes, oh, Just continuously rest in that connection, connection to yourself and then connection to the master.
Okay. So we're going to have uh, uh, some questions and uh, I'll try to answer if I can. Paul, are you there? Okay. So meanwhile, I uh, all of you give you a little time to uh, some questions, and if you have, and I will just say a few more words no. while you have your questions. Uh, you can begin to uh, write your questions already. Um, when we talk about the master, we also look as the master, not only outer master, sometimes uh, the reason why I have been emphasizing to the inner refuge a lot, uh, because we already are very familiar, we know very well about the outer refuge, external refuge, so, so the inner refuge that I'm emphasizing sometimes is also know, known as an innermost sacred refuge, but instead of making many divisions, I just use the term inner refuge. Uh, for example, there's a very important text called Yetita Sel. It says, I'm just going to read in Tibetan and then explain it. Mowo Tenshing Chopa Yi Nye Tsik Tenshing Dewa Yi So this is, uh, it says uh, the, the meaning of the master is the one who guides and protects. The one who shows and interprets. And uh, what what it's referring to is, of course, it's referring to uh, inner refuge. It's referring to our own inner essence, the nature of mind, and um, the the rikpa, you know, uh, in innate awareness. It's referring to that. I know it's same text. It says, "Kunrik tumba rikpi sim, tumba kunji tunkini." Uh, what does that mean? It says uh, uh, it knows everything uh, and it shows everything is the one who is the shore of the shores. Tempa Kunji So is the, is the one who shows the F everything what is there to be shown. So uh, it knows everything, it shows everything, it is the one who shows whatever there is needed to be shown. That's what it's saying. This is the uh, very ancient text called Yeditasil, and it's referring to the inner master. And as I've been emphasizing that a lot in the last couple of years, many of you know, so when you be still and silent and spacious in, internally, and to connect with that source, the, in, the inner intelligence that which will know what to teach you, when to teach you, how to teach you, how to guide you, how to protect you in that particular moment. I personally, I truly trust that going to that space, the advices, the guidance will come from that inner space is the far, the most accurate, uh, when you're able to go in that space, is the most accurate the intelligence and advices I get. So some sense of uh, learning to um, go to that place and also particularly in any form of conflict, in any form of relationship when it's happening, to go to that place, seek for advice, then seeking advice from anybody else. So uh, I just wanted to mention this because um, particularly in the West, uh, it is uh, it is a very diff culturally very difficult, and there's also a lot of uh, issues with the teachers and uh, a relationship between teacher and students. And there's a lot of issues with the, uh, the question about trust. There's a lot of distrust, and so so it's a little different than uh, the Tibetan culture. So uh, when so when that happens, 
and I think one of the good places to go is not go into mode of critical attacking, and but it, to go into that find that inner in, inner teacher, find that place, and then find some solution and guidance from that that place as this teaching talks about it. I think it's a very very good place to go. So I will just end this here and maybe I just give you uh, some uh, uh, space for some questions. So one question from Monterrey, Mexico. Uh, what uh, what is the true characteristic uh, qualities of the teacher? You know. Um, so of course there are many many different explanations in the teaching. I'll keep it very simple. So the true characteristics of the teacher will be teacher which kind of represents the teaching. Teacher who uh, in the ways the things that I have been teaching. The teacher who is open enough that have enough quality of the first refuge, teacher who is aware enough having qualities of the second refuge, teacher who is warmth, is loving warmth and caring warmth is enough that uh, the qualities of the third refuge and then the first quality of the first refuge when we say unbounded space, teacher is of course obviously is not egoistic and uh, the ego is minimum and uh, so that there's a lot of space there uh, so loving kindness is there a teacher who has uh, also as we as I mentioned earlier that who has the uh, body of knowledge because sometimes uh, we particularly in the West because it's a very intellectual society so that we um, we feel I'm, I'm including myself in that group now, as, as, as you heard me. We feel that we need to, to learn enough intellectually also, even though we might not practicing what we know already, but still the desire to learn a lot. And sometimes that desire, it's also imp uh, to respecting that desire is important that you need to learn enough. That means you need to, to have a teacher also. In that particular case, you need to have a teacher who knows enough also. And when you don't have uh, so much hunger for intellectual hunger, then you need a teacher more experiential, a teacher quality of a teacher who has more experiential teacher. Best thing will be a teacher who has the both qualities. So those qualities, I think, uh, it's important qualities to have. Sorry, repeat again. Second question is, uh, how does one um, deal with the situation when a student is feeling resistance to the teaching itself? Well, that's a very, very good question. That's not frequently people ask that question. And so, of course, um, you know, I think my feeling is that sometimes in the West, uh, the teacher is trying to teach too many different topics, uh, too many different things. And uh, because um, like in particularly like uh, the teachings which is coming from Tibet, and there are a lot of cultural element in them. And uh, which are very important for Tibetans, so some of them might not necessarily uh, very, very, uh, how you say, not necessary in the Western world. So sometimes, uh, if if you, if the t specific teachings that you are not able to relate, just make sure that it's not you cannot relate because you're lazy. You know, because you can people people you can say, oh, I don't relate to go to the gym, exercise gym. I don't I don't relate to the trying to do enough exercise. That's a laziness. It has nothing to do with the exercise. So, so you have to work with your laziness clearly. But when it's not about the laziness, because something about the teaching that you cannot relate, then maybe it's possible that particular kind of teaching might be not for you. I think it's I think it's important to give us respect yourself. And give space for yourself that you you don't have to 
uh, relate equally to every teaching you don't so it's okay not able to feel same level of deep connection to every teaching no so the teachings that you do feel connection you work with those teachings the teachings you don't feel absolutely connection you give yourself a space to knowing uh, not to do that and but it, that does not mean that that something wrong with that teaching and that's important that you don't go on saying that teaching is not important or not teaching is not valuable or but it's not for you so you, you, you respect yourself give a space but always respect the teaching as it is and always help preserve it always uh, you know because you, it, it will be very very beneficial for other people so that always hold that sense of great respect Yeah. So another wonderful question. So if the if the teacher uh, behavior is unethical and uh, something is not acceptable, but how to how to continue? So so that is a very important question. So if you each person you need to, to kind of reflect deep and see what exactly the situation is. If there is a situation clearly that not right that collectively agreed agreed that you feel different perspective everybody feeling the similar way then one does not need to follow that teacher you know so it you won't need to doesn't need need to obey or follow and just let go completely but if the if the if the teacher uh, whatever the conflict is if their conflict is something that in interpersonal relationship, then maybe there is something to work. If not, then let, let it go. One can let it go. <laughs> so the question is if if the if uh, if one we feel call the master from the far does the master hear it well i asked that question to my teachers and uh, he smiled and uh, he smiled i said well, i have dreamed i have dreams uh, having this kind of long sequence conversation with him i said are you really there because this is kind of conversations are happening you know in sequence and the continuation and he smiles so i don't know what to interpret that smile yes or not but when student people student ask me well clearly i don't hear them so uh, i don't hear when people are calling me but i don't think uh, when uh, when uh, I don't think that's so important to me to hear when you or somebody is calling me I don't think it's a really good idea if I'm having a good sleep somebody is calling me from the other side of the world and saying somebody's calling I have to wake up middle of the night that won't be not very good right but um, but when the connection is there the, as in the deep meditation we say don't listen to the silence if you're hearing it when the connection is there you don't need to do call you call when the connection is not there so i think if you feel the connection is there don't stop screaming calling from far away <laughs> just tune tune into that inner refuge S cyber okay okay well i think it's a very uh, very interesting question you know like uh, in in okay sorry so the question is uh, a question from the cyber sangha and cyber student in in the cyber 
space. <laughs> so the question is, uh, what, what is my expectation from the cyber student? So the, I said, this is an interesting question, you know, like uh, usually there's always teacher or students uh, having this close contact and relationship and like that. And but all, when the time is not same time, of course, when we have a 500 years ago when the master who who has wonderful transmissions coming down and the teaching in Texas there. So we read them, we learn from them, we kind of deep inside we feel we are following that master, even though we never met the master. So I think in a similar way, as far as a teacher's expectation from the student, I think there's nothing different than uh, any student, nothing no different in a cyber student. But the cyber student, uh, I always say, this is, there is a great opportunity to, to uh, interrelate with the cyber way and because, uh, because we are bounded with the time, we are bounded with the space and uh, we are, so the cyber, uh, the, elect, uh, the, how you say, the web, uh, the web era, internet era, it's like where it allow us to connect with each other. So I think it will be great to continue develop this relationship as we are doing today. And by the way, and all the cyber sangha, the, those who are, I know there's a group uh, them, uh, among my students, there is a group of cyber sangha every time I go in every different country. So one of them comes up to me and always brings me this beautiful, uh, very, uh, uh, I say, heartfelt and work lot in the details about the beautiful paper, beautiful ink, beautiful poetry, and the name of each person there. Every, every time I receive those beautiful postcards, so I wanted to thank all the cyber sangha for doing that. Okay. Well, I think uh, generally, generally speaking, uh, oh, the question, sorry. The, so the question is, um, I wanted to be a good, good student and uh, what, it, what it means to obey and what it means to follow the uh, follow, right? So, well, obeying, you know, like um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, obey is, uh, I don't, I don't personally, as a teacher, I don't tell people what to do or not to do. And, and very in contrary, I don't, I don't usually, uh, I'm not that person who, like, you know, many stories you hear are very strict masters and giving a lot of rules and disciplines and guidance and like that, uh, telling what to do. I'm not that person. But generally, as far as I'm concerned, my obeys will be, Sometimes I would be a little bit more uh, straightforward with uh, certain things, like okay, or I don't know. It seems like a, I would say to somebody that, for example, I, which I don't remember I've ever said, but I sometimes wish to ab wish to able to say, not getting offended, somebody, you you seems very egoistic in this situation, but I don't remember ever saying one like that. But that will be good to have a freedom for the teacher to be able to say that to somebody if I really truly feel to say that. So those things will be, when I say that, I need to, I have to have a student who is willing to take it rather than saying, I think you're egoistic too. Of course I have an ego, maybe I am egoistic sometime, but in that relationship, I wish they will not tell me that. <laughs> But they will rather listen to saying, okay, you're showing me my ego because you, you are my teacher's role. You, you should need to, sh my, 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 it's not my job to show you, you, your ego because you have your teacher who can show you. But I, I put you in a role that you're showing me my ego. So thank you for showing my ego and I will clearly work on it. And that will be, so situations like that, I think the, when, when, uh, uh, in the teaching, in my teachings, I all, often talk about certain situations and the issues in the in life, and people very often they will say, "Oh, it seems like you're talking about me whole evening today," and uh, so maybe sometime I might be a little strong in a, some statement that I will make 
but maybe if you take those statement he is not talking to somebody but he is talking to me and i will take it in my heart and if you, if you obey that if you listen to those things then i would consider that as a obeying in this situation other than that i will not uh, tell somebody to you know in the miller up situation all the situations they are master asking somebody to build something in the night destroying things giving such a hard time really like a uh, of course in, in in the western world it will be torture and um i say um um and it will be called what is called abuse right so no we don't don't have to worry about that one here okay Okay, this is so, so two very interesting question also. By the way, thank you very much for asking wonderful questions. I think they're great questions. So the, the second question is how do one approach the teacher or how to one communicate to the teacher, right? Is it communicate to the teacher? Yeah. Or achieve the closer communication, yeah, that's a good question. So how do one approach the teacher and how do one achieve closer communication with the teacher okay so so that is a um, uh, particularly second question i think is a very important question there's a lot of problem with that as that question um, because um, i i hear many uh, uh, well-known masters uh, students from uh, other well-known masters and i hear sometimes complaints about people saying Oh, we used to hang out with our, you know, with him, and now we don't even get a five-minute appointment or something like that, you know. So, um, and uh, people get a little bit disappointed about it, and uh, and um, some some even get upset about it, and sometimes people, yeah. So there's a many degree, different degrees of problems with that 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 situation. So I think it's really important that. This is the moment you have to let go of that that idea of you need to hang out with the master or you need to have like a, a regular email with the master. You need to do regular phone call with the master or something like that. That idea absolutely one need to let go of that. You know, I myself with my teacher who for, for since I was 10 until 26 lived together in the same house same house eat every day three meals same place hours of the teaching and classes even during during the holiday we walk together you know like everything like that things change you know time changes space changes and uh, when i go when i go to visit my teacher it was also um, it's a, it's the same thing you know like i go to him visit him so very often i try to go to visit him in nepal i said in france i have he seems like have more time to at least uh, uh, talk a little bit a bit together but i i expect very little i just you know very little time i ex expect and you know, so i'm not expecting so much time that like that's like ego i i can feel that i need the time with my teacher you know when i was one time in nepal uh, in the morning i went to visit him and then Every five minutes, somebody else, somebody's keep coming there with the kataks and offerings and things. I'm saying, can we just close the door for, you know, like, I don't know, for half an hour or something like that? So, of course, I felt that. And, of course, I realized that's, that's the ego. That's the ego. You know, that's my expectations. And, you know, I had probably, I had him more than anybody probably uh, uh, anybody uh, uh, his time so I should be happy and satisfied enough now and if I have even not have that opportunity to see him for a moment I should be happy enough because I I feel so con strong connection with him that connection is so strong that it does it fulfills the my need my need to you know in physical in person and that phone call or that conversation connection not necessary so i think it's important to because practically it's not possible we have to respect that practically it's not possible when you begin to expect that 
you are putting yourself in a, a difficult position and you're also putting a master in a difficult position because you know making somebody feel or oh, you know I'm not able to give time or something like that and so what is the most important relation between the master and student is the teaching which is always there the practices which is always there and and especially now in a different forms like this right now this very moment many of you are listening to me this connection is there you know just as you hear me as you see me it should be same as if I, I was sitting with you those you're feeling like that if I'm just sitting with you there's no differences I am talking to all, all of you as, as one each individual. I'm sharing whatever I feel it's most important in this moment for students' ev evolution, the practice and development. I try to do my best to share that. If you came individually, ask me a question, I have nothing more to share than what I share. I as I always tell people. So I'm sharing everything. So I think uh, the bottom line is I think that closeness is there. That frequent email or phone call or physical presence, uh, if that is the only definition of closeness, then I think it's important to let delete that and define the closeness, meaning of closeness in a different way. Like as this very moment, you are close. As this very moment when we did a short practice with the Guru Yoga, cannot be more closer to your own inner teacher and your guide teacher. So cultivate that. Uh, quality. Okay, so the, uh, there's two questions. One question is, can, can a student can have more than one teacher? And I already told before that uh, His Holiness, Yongjin Boche, Lopez Sanjay Tenzi, my teachers, so I think probably should have heard that. So that's already, I've answered that. So of course, student can have more teachers, um, more, more than one teachers. And uh, uh, the question about uh, can student can have uh, uh, more than one teacher in a different spiritual lineages? Yes, absolutely, one can have uh, more than one lineage teachers because in the end of the day, I think the most important thing is it's about the st student. It's you. It's important. It's not what teacher tells you, it's you important. But teacher will always tell you what, per, what general guidelines will be. For example, I have a students, I have a st two students who are following a different teachers. But they, but they don't have a conflict. They embody both tradition. They're trying to practice in a both tradition and uh, different things, but they don't mix this tradition. Also, where they understand these practices, is the, the, an essential part of the teaching, they see there is, it comes to the core, same place. So that core, same place is what their practice is. Their, their practice is not one particular, uh, um, uh, how you say, it? like let's give an example of like saying um, one specific practice and uh, uh, how to how to practice a compassion so you learn slightly different visualization different deity from one master you like learn slightly different instead of three step steps four step with one master another deity instead of three step two step no steps with one master but in the end you know it's about practice of compassion but you can do three step one you can do two step one you can do no step one but you know each time you are doing the practice of compassion you conclude like that so you don't have a conflict the problem is sometimes people do and and enter into a conflict they say oh i'm overwhelmed by the, all these differences i'm overwhelmed by the too many practices i'm overwhelmed by following two teachers i don't have a time i don't have money to follow two teachers well who told you to follow who pressure you to follow? Did somebody force you to follow? 
if that is the, if that is really the story then stop following two master and stop doing two practices focus focus is good not do not get into a, a, a shopping in the mode mood of shopping teachers shopping dharma shopping practice like a shopping anything else people do in the west do you use them what do you shop no i always think about when i'm shopping i'm thinking about get the best what you will wear all the time you know so because many times you think you buy something you think it's nice or something but you don't use it you don't wear them you don't use them get the best and keep it use use it all the time find the right person and follow all the time so that is uh, my advice uh, is it second question was similar no Yeah, if your if your second question is if you're already relating uh, relating to the if you're following if you if you if you're relating to the second teacher then how you follow with the previous samayas well that depends on what previous samayas you have i if the previous samaya is not to follow other teachers then i think your previous samaya and the previous teacher has some problems there but i don't think any teacher will have uh, i would never tell any students not follow anybody but i will tell them uh, connect deep with your own practice on your teacher that you feel full the most important thing wandering around searching too many things is a, is the is a, is the sign of dissatisfaction it's sign of not enough connection it's a sign of not knowing your connection it's a sign of not depth of that connection it you don't fall in love with everybody you meet you know if you do you're not connect you do, you don't have a real connection with somebody it's similar so it i think it's important that you you trying to um so anyway the question that to keep it simple so if you have already if you're following somebody you have previous samaya okay maybe this is another another thing maybe you're trying to tell me is about the practices so if you have a, a samaya a true practice some specific thing then and then you are following uh, another master then you have the other practices so now question about having not enough time to do both practices or if if those are the situation then you know again if 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 you are if you are practicing whatever you are practicing the first one or the second one current one or the past one if you in deep inside your in your heart you know this both practice is is the same core principle is the same thing if you know what the same thing or one thing then i don't think you are breaking the samaya of somebody else by simply doing another prayers or another technique you're not breaking breaking the samaya if you are not doing the practice if you have disconnected with the practice if you are completely against those past practice then you are probably breaking the samaya but in a different form in the same essence i do not think you are breaking the samaya maybe maybe my explanation is first explanation is unnecessary maybe that is your question so maybe anyway it's fine okay is the last question is the last question what is it okay so so uh, question uh, is what is the good next step to follow if i wanted to follow these teachings if you are referring to these teaching as a burn teaching and following me of course um, the your your question is already a first step so if you keep that question in your mind that if the question is strong um, very alive 
and activate it all the time and it's, it's with you all the time I'm sure you will answer the inner intelligence will answer you will give you an answer what to do the next and how to follow the next listen to that inner voice okay thank you very much and uh, I wanted to conclude here so we will we all will do the dedication together and also I am after we finish here I'm going to play some music and put on our next web webcast schedules here so that all of you well, you can write it down and uh, as always uh, uh, I'm asking to all the people who are listening our cyber sangha and particularly those who are listening to this webcast and particularly if you feel that this webcast is meaningful if you wanted to help me and then I, I, want, I have a little uh, uh, request to you is to use your social network which is maybe a maximum is the three clicks that you can do you three click 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 three clicks you can do and it will be a great gift from you to all the other people who might connect to, uh, to who might need need the connection who might be interested in these teaching who might benefit this teaching so you can click 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 in order to benefit my effort and every, all the people who are putting giving support here to me and and you might benefit your friend those you are clicking to so that is my uh, request as an active request that means you you engage doing it it's not like a, you know okay when I remember not I want you to say well I'll, I'll definitely take it seriously and uh, next in a couple of weeks I will definitely have many clicks so that next webcast teaching all those people I feel they it will benefit them they will able to participate in this so take a little bit uh, individual role here I'm asking that to do and I will put some of the announcement here so you can notice that okay Yeah.